Okay, Woodworker Anonymous here, and I'm here to tell you and show you uh, how to build a better French cleat tool wall. Um, and the basic genesis of that is this cleat wall has a locking system in it. So any fixtures or jigs or tools that you mount on your uh, French cleat wall can be locked in place so there's no way for it to get knocked off, fall off, uh, lifted out by accident. Um, and uh, pretty simple thing. Um, you basically you're gonna have to make sure all of your cleats are exactly the same distance apart. Um, and that is the case here. Uh, you, can make, um, you can make these cleats any width you want here but the space between them has to be identical throughout. So just make a spacer block and, or three, you know, I use three spacer blocks and just spread them across and uh, screwed all the cleats on so they're all the exact same distance apart. Um, and uh, this also facilitates like putting tools wherever you want them because there are more cleats, they're closer together and um, so you, you you can you know get more versatility out of this system let's put it that way um well, another thing like to, to to use this system with like a what i consider like a a key lock a sliding key lock that you should be able to use to make sure all your jigs don't fall out um it's imperative that like these these cleats be the exact same distance apart um throughout otherwise you have to make different size key locks for every row of cleats so you know just cut like you know three blocks here that are exactly the same width or height and just make sure that everything's snugged up before you start to driving the screws and uh that'll take care of that um so let me get busy doing that okay i just wanted to share with you a few other thoughts on uh you know why i'm doing this uh this french cleat system i mean everybody's a lot of people are doing these i, I saw john hines do a different system where it's like a a sliding rabbited dado uh, instead of cleat French cleats and that's a cool system too I mean it just wouldn't work for me though I mean I have cabinets on one side and shelving on the other side so I wouldn't be able to slide these dadoed like uh, runners in in from the sides which you have to do on that uh, unless you left like a big gap in the middle you could try to slide it in from the middle but then that just kind of eats up real estate so you know, it, this, that wasn't going to work. I had, it had to be like something more like this or, or possibly something I saw Jay Bates do where he just like used a flat tool wall and he just screwed his little tool holders directly into the, the tool wall, which again is good and I'm sure it looks great, you know, once you plan it out and all that stuff. But, you know, I'm constantly changing what I'm, what I'm using, what I'm, what I'm doing and I'm upgrading my tool here or there. And so I'd be changing that up once in a while. And I'm, you know, I think that it, eventually you would just start moving stuff around and have holes all over your tool wall. So I decided to go with this. It's a little more versatile, um, maybe a little more time. Uh, you know, it may be different for you. But uh, anyway, let me get finished with this and see what it looks like. So <clears throat> the first thing I built here is this um, charging station because it was a rat's nest down here. Just wires and chargers, not just a huge mess. So this is just a basic box. Uh, you can see the uh, this shape, I was like about a trapezoid. It's got a 15 degree incline here, just so it makes it easier to see the charging lights. Um, built like a false wall, about six inches back. All the wires go back in here, so yeah, I didn't have to see that huge mess. And I uh, just put an extension cord in there, power strip. <clears throat> so everything's contained back there. Just have like power strip coming out the bottom, going right into the outlet, so that's good. Uh, just a shelf down here for storing the, um, the batteries once they're charged. Um, you know, I, I see a lot of people they built like another like thing to mount these things in, some extravagant like. I, I don't really see the advantage of doing that. I mean, basically, if I did that, it'd be a lot more time and effort and. You know, whether this thing's hanging like a couple inches off the, the workbench or just sitting there down below, it doesn't make any difference. So, um, you know, basically I just want to get all the chargers and all the charging uh, 
batteries off the workbench and get the wires under control. So I think we got that accomplished. <clears throat> now, this unit is pretty heavy. So I don't have any worries about this thing, you know, falling off the cleat when I lift stuff up. I mean, it's, you got to make an effort to lift that off of that cleat. Uh, but um, other things like, for example, the Echo Dot, that's light and that, that could get knocked off or bumped and fall off. So it's using one of my uh, locking cleats. And basically the way that works is here's the cleat that goes on the back, whatever it is you want to hang on the wall. And it's got a 10 degree back cut down here. So when that goes in there, and this top one has a 10 degree back cut. So cut this little key, it's 10 degrees. Once you get it where you want it, just put this in here, slide it in. Oh, look at that. It's not going anywhere, you know, unless you don't, you don't want to take it out and then you want to, comes right out. But the simple little locking key works really well. So for like little light fixtures like that, that you might knock off when you lift stuff up. Locking key is going to be really hand handy. And um, <clears throat> just rip some plywood. You know, when I had this all set up, so got a bunch of cleats ready to go. And this is a locking key strip. So I can just cut them, cut them and use them as I need them. And that's one of the <clears throat> key reasons that these things all had to be the exact same distance apart. So, um, those things will be easy to like just put on any jaw, any fixtures that I want to put up here. And that's kind of the game right now. It's just deciding what I'm going to put up on this tool wall, where I'm going to put it, and trying to do it as easily as possible. So I started adding some tool holders to the French cleat wall. There's the jigsaw and the circular saw. Nice. Um, so I just hung up some hand saws. You know, I got the, pow the uh, power station here. Um, and I started putting other things up here on the wall and I realized, you know, I really, this is like my miter station over here. It's a good place for storage, but I don't do most of my work over here. I do most of my work at the big workbench. So, and I had this space between the garage doors that was a mess, like over here. It just had some brooms and stuff in the middle. So I cleaned all that out and just put a mini French cleat system right here next to the workbench. You know, things I use most often here, some planes, some chisels, and some uh, clamps, and uh, some still yet to be determined things to be hung here. And, uh, you know, again, I, I wanted to show you that the uh, the key lock system is really working well, especially for like these like holders that I made for my um, planes. Um, they, they just slide in and out. So if there was no key lock there, it's like, it's, it's really likely that these things would have popped out, um, you know, when you get when you lift straight up on them. But uh, the key lock really does a nice job of keeping everything right where it should be. And if I ever want to move it, it's just a simple matter of pushing out that key lock, and then I can move this to back over to the other cleat wall if I want. Um, but I'm really starting to like the cleat wall with, instead of like, you know, just the bare tool wall with like screwed, tools holder screwed directly to it. Um, you know, I'm going to probably constantly be changing what I want on these walls and where I want it. And I don't want to have to keep adding holes and subtracting holes and, you know, so this is a work in progress. I'm trying to figure out what I want. I mean, I have this like, this is my idea of like how to like do a, uh, a a clamp rack basically you know it's just a piece of wood and uh, it's about two and a quarter inches tall I just put a little rabbit here so it catches the head and basically you know, that's all it does and um, just put it here and squeeze it up and you're good to go it's not going anywhere fall off because of that right there um what i like about it is like you can push squish these things right up against each other so you can get a lot of uh a lot of clamps in a sh very shallow or narrow space um so this is like a really tiny space here and i've got a lot of stuff in it and i still got a lot of 
room to add, add more. I'd like to add more clamps, but it's really not in a budget. <clears throat> um, so anyway, just trying to show you a little bit of like the, um, how well the uh, little key locks are working. Um, you know, again, and this necessitates putting uh, these things closer together uh, so that uh, you can cut these little key locks and uh, slide them right in there. Um, it all, but you know, putting them closer together also makes it much more versatile. You can put these tools wherever you want them. So something to think about.